Okay, so we're going to have a look at how work groups can help with remote working. So work groups in Bitrix are uh, self-contained hubs uh, that you can invite your colleagues to. Uh, and the colleagues that are within that particular work group have access to all the communication elements, so the activity stream within that work group, but also tools such as tasks, uh, calendars and document storage for that particular work group as well. So we're going to have a look at work groups in this case for collaboration and work groups are commonly seen to be used for uh, such things as departments. So whether uh, you create a work group for maybe the marketing department and you can invite all the or your colleagues for the marketing department into that specific work group. Uh, and the reason why you might do this is that you can then all communicate together, you can store the assets for your marketing team within the document storage, and you can use the calendar within that work group as well to plan your marketing strategy moving forward. So if I click into work groups and click on create, you can see here that we can create an open work group, uh, we can create a private work group or we can create an external work group. So an open work group essentially allows anybody to know that it exists uh, and they can request to become a member of that work group. Uh, a private work group is a little bit different. So a private work group, you would only know that that work group exists if you have been invited to that work group space. And finally, an external work group, again, is a private work group, but the external work group allows you to invite your external clients to it. So in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a private work group for the marketing team. Uh, this is a group for the marketing employees to collaborate and work together. In. So I'm just giving it a description just to explain what this work group is about. Again, we can add an icon if we wanted to. So maybe if we added a specific icon here. Uh, the work group owner is going to be myself at the moment. But you can also have work group moderators. So work group owner and moderators have a little bit more access permissions inside it. So it might be that you want to restrict some documents or file storage for the owner and the moderators. So we, we would usually add, for example, maybe marketing supervisors or marketing managers in there. So we can add Jack and Joe's work group moderators. And then we can add Andy, Laura, and Damien in as the employees. So what's going to happen here, each one of these users that I am sending uh, an invite to is going to receive a notification in their notification center in the top right. And they're going to, they can then accept the invitation to join the marketing team work group. Now, the important part here is if we click on more, what we can do is we can switch on and off the modules inside Bitrix that you want within this particular work group. So it's clear to point out that anything that you add in here is only going to be visible to the users that you invite to this group. So it's this particular work group is solely going to be marketing orientated. So we're going to want tasks. Tasks is a great one to work with. And uh, in our other video recording, we look at uh, project managements and tasks and how you can re uh, work remotely on those kinds of elements. But in a marketing team, you are going to want to have tasks. I guess you are going to want to have the calendar so you can plan your marketing strategy in this case. The drive is where the documents get stored. We can have an instant messenger uh, within the group. So it might be again worth having a look at our communication uh, recording. We can have conversations. So conversations is the activity stream where we can post out news too.
And then we can have other elements like photo gallery, lists, uh, we can have the wiki, we can have applications, and we may want to use the new knowledge base. Uh, that's all you need to do for the moment. Everything is preset. If you want to add a tag to make it a little bit more searchable, you can do. But once you've created that group, as I said, everybody is going to get invited to that specific group. So now we have in front of us the marketing team private work group. So you can see the members of the group uh, that have accepted below. And as I mentioned, anything that you add in here is going to be solely for the members of this specific group. So it's really good tool to collaborate together in small groups of employees. So it might be that we have a new marketing, new marketing uh, landing page arrive. Uh, please. So what I'm doing here is writing an activity stream post. So every all the members of the marketing team and all the group members can actually get notified of this new uh, activity stream post. So please check the design below. And I can add an image in here. So it might be that we add the example design. Click on insert and we can insert that post into here. Uh, please let me know. And you can see here we're posting it to the marketing team work group. And once I click on send, that will then add itself to the activity stream within this specific work group. So everybody is going to be notified of that. And then what you can do is you can like, you can comment. So I can write a comment. And so I can say, we can add in more images or files to this, embed video, tag people in. It might be that I want to tag, I can see that Jack's a member of this particular work group, so I can add Jack into here. Jack will then get a notification. And this is how your collaboration builds up within the work group side itself. So you can post uh, polls as well, so that gets a little bit more involvement within here. And again, everything is done so you can uh, learn more about what is being posted. You can collaborate uh, together within here. So tasks, we're going to have a look at in a little bit more detail in our other project, tasks and projects recording. But it essentially allows you to create a task for another member of the marketing team to carry out. So it might be, please design us a flyer, please design a poster or a website, uh, please schedule meetings in for this, that and the other. And we're going to go into this in a little bit more detail in the projects and tasks recording. Uh, as I mentioned, you can have a calendar, so you can add events into here. So we can add a new event, and it might be that we have a remote uh, meeting, Patrick uh, 24 call, and then we can add additional attendees if we want. I'm, I know Jack and Joe are members of this. That will bring their availability up. So we know that they are going to be available at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, and we can have a location. We can add a new location by configuring a list on here. We can give it a, so we can say, uh, morning meeting to discuss the new Flyer. So you can add as much content as you wish, click on save, and what that's going to do, it's going to add the meeting in here. And again, everybody within the marketing team will be able to see these meeting events. One of the key tools within here as well is being able to store and manage documents. And it's especially good for having work groups as departments because obviously departmental uh, document documentation is quite important. So what we can do is we can simply add and upload files in here. So if we wanted to add a quotation, for example, or a project brief, then it's 
simple as that, it will upload and it will add the document to the actual marketing team workgroup drive. If you did want to assign permissions on your group, you can do so. You can click on the little gear icon, click on assign permissions, and you can see here the group owner and the group moderators. It might be that you don't want the group members to be able to see that document. So all you need to do is just remove them off their access permissions, click on save, and then the normal members of this particular group will not be able to access the document. So please use the work groups as a place to uh, store important documentation. And what furthermore you can do is if you do have Word documents, or so if I, I'm not sure if I have any on this system, but if I did have a Word document, maybe we have a CSV here. What we can actually do is we can decide how we want to be able to edit that particular document. So if I click back into the little gear icon up here, I can click on settings for working with documents. And because we use Google Docs, we can edit the document using Google Docs. Or if you use Office 365, you can also connect that up and be able to edit it within the cloud. So again, it's perfect for remote working, because you don't actually need to have the software for uh, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel on your computer. You can still use it uh, within the cloud as long as obviously you have an internet connection. If you did want to use and edit the documents locally, all you would need to do is just switch your method for working with documents to locally. So that is documents, and again, it's quite easy and straightforward to do. You can add your folder structure in here. So instead of uploading files, you can add, you can add folders. We have, uh, when we create a work group, we have the option to add a chat. So this will add every member of the work group who's accepted the invite into the chat. And you can see here, it actually automatically updates when you post new activity stream articles onto the work group activity stream. So you can see here, and again, you can like and comment back. So welcome to the group. And send that message out to everybody and again everybody's going to get notified of that particular uh, work group message if you want to turn off notifications personally you can click on the little bell icon to disable the chat notifications the conversations is exactly the same as the general tab it just gives you the or activity stream that you've posted your messages to and then finally bitrix also has a knowledge base tool so that is an internal a place to store article information. So it might be especially good for marketing guidelines in this case. I'm not going to go through how you set up these. There is a great tutorial on Bitrix24 to be able to set up the knowledge base. But yeah, for in terms of we've created this collaboration space in inside Bitrix, the knowledge base would be good for your marketing guidelines. So that is a short summary of how you can collaborate and communicate with one another with inside a private work group. You can obviously do the same in a public uh, work group. That means everybody will be able to access the information you post in here. We're going to have a look on another one of our videos at the project side and the task management side. So hopefully, like I say, this helps with your remote working uh, with your colleagues that are grouped in either a department, a particular uh, kind of, I mean, you can do these on projects. So you can, you can work on uh, and collaborate however you wish on here. So I hope that helps. Bye for now.